I knew that, that I had it. found home for myself. Because when I was a news reporter, it was so unnatural for me, I, you know, to cover somebody's tragedies and difficulties, and then to not to have feel anything for it. And I would go back after mm. a fire, and I would take them blankets, and then I would get a note from my boss saying, what the hell are you doing? Right. You're just supposed to report Can't be that it. empathetic. Can't, can't no. not be that empathetic. And it felt unnatural for me. So um, if I were to put it in business terms, it, it, or, or to leave you with a message, that the truth is I have from the very beginning listened to my instinct. All of my best decisions in life have come because I was attuned to what really felt like the next right move for me. And I knew that if I, even if I didn't succeed, because at the time there was a, there was a guy named Phil Donahue yeah. who was the king of mm -hmm. talk and was on in Chicago, and every single person, except my best friend Gail, said you're gonna fail. Every single person when I left, they, my bosses by this time thought I was terrific and said you're gonna, you're, you're, you're walking into a landmine, you're gonna fail, you're gonna fail, Chicago's a racist city, you're black, you're not gonna make it. Everything to, to keep me sane. They then offered me a car and an apartment and all this stuff, and I said no, if I fail, then I will find out what is the next thing for me, what is the next right. true thing for me. It's Where What I needed would show up for me. Okay. And when that showed up, I was ready. Because my definition of luck is preparation meeting the moment of opportunity. Right. And I was pre prepared to be able to step into that, 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 that world of talk in a way that I, I knew I could do it. So often in your career, I'm sure you are a minority perhaps is the only woman, the only black person, the only person from a poor family. Uh, did this affect you on your professional path? And how did you navigate situations in which you might have felt more alone? Mm. And now, how did that impact how you lead and how you might help people who may be feeling that same thing? Okay, man, that's a lot of questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's... I mean, I, I, man, let's, I have to let put me, my glasses let me... on. I figured I had you here. I was gonna. I was gonna ask as much as I could. Um, so Amanda went deep on me there for a minute there. Whoa! Back up, sister girl. Come on, back up. First one. So, how did you navigate situations in which you might have felt more alone? Always the only only woman in the room. Mm. Still walk in, only woman in the room, and there's a room full of white men, usually older. Um, thrills me. Just thrills me. <laughs> I just, I just love it. <laughs> um, usually the only black person in the room. Also, never really concerned me because I, I don't look at people through color. I didn't get to be where I am by, and who I am by looking at uh, the color of people's skin. I really, literally took Martin Luther King at his word uh, and understand that the content of a person's character and refuse to let anybody else do that to me. So I love it, just <laughs> love it. Um, there's a wonderful phrase by Maya Angelou from a poem that she wrote called um, To Our Grandmothers that she says, when I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. So when <clears throat> I walk into a room, and particularly before I have something really challenging to do or I'm going to be in a circumstance where I feel I'm going to be, you know, up against um, some difficulties, I will literally sit and I will call on that 10,000. Mm -hmm. I will call on the, the ancestors. I will call on those people who've come before me. I will call on the women who forged a path that I might be able to sit in the room with all of those white men and love it so much. <laughs> uh, I, 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 call on, I call on that right. because I know that my being where I am, and first of all, being who I am right. and where I am didn't come just out of myself, that I come from a heritage, because okay. this is the truth. There is no real doing in the world without being first. For me, being your presence, your connection to yourself, and that which is greater than yourself is far more important than what you do, but also is the thing that fuels what you do. Right. And I know that one of the things that is 
so important for what happens here uh, at the graduate school is that you have leaders who are self-actualized and understand what your contribution to change the world can be. You can only do that if you know yourself. You can only do that unless you take, unless you, you cannot do it unless you take the time to actually know who you are and why you are here. Now, I happen to know for sure that mm -hmm. every human being comes, comes called. And that the calling goes beyond um, the definition of what your job is. That there is innate, there is an innate supreme moment of destiny for everybody. And that's why when I was in Baltimore, I could feel this isn't it, mm -hmm. this isn't it. And then in Chicago, uh, after 25 years of success on the show, I started to feel this isn't it, there's something more, something more, something more that's calling me to what is the supreme moment. And everybody has that. And you cannot um, fulfill it unless you have a level of self-awareness to be connected to what is the inner voice or the instinct, I call it your emotional GPS system, uh, that allows you to make the best decisions for yourself. And every decision that has profited me mm -hmm. has come from me listening to that inner voice first. Yes. And every, dis every time I've gotten into a situation where I was in trouble, it's because I didn't listen to it. I overrode that voice, that instinct, with my own, with my own head, my own thinking. I tried to rationalize it. I tried to tell myself, but you know, okay, you're gonna make a lot of money. Oh no! <laughs> and so, I am. I sit here, uh, you know, profitable, successful by all the definitions of the world. But what really, really, really resonates deeply with me is that I live a fantastic life. My inner life is really intact. My, I live from the inside out, and so everything that I have, I have because I let it be fueled by who I am and what I realize my contributions to the planet could be. Mm -hmm. And what my real contribution is, it looks like I'm a, I was a talk show host. It looks like you know, I'm in the movies. It looks like you know, I have a network. But my real contribution, the reason why I'm here, yep. is to help connect people to themselves and the higher ideas of consciousness. I'm here to help raise consciousness. So my television platform was to help raise consciousness. 